I think we should walk through these 10 truths and how they relate to the four key systems in the body that you've already identified, cardiovascular, mm. metabolic, musculoskeletal, and psychological slash emotional well-being. Mm -hmm. So what are these 10 truths and how did you arrive upon these as the most important variables or levers to look at in terms of moving the needle on one's health? Okay, so maybe we should go through system by system. So if we start with cardiovascular slash cardiorespiratory health, there's three biomarkers that we wanna test here. They are APOB, blood pressure, and VO2 max. So let's start with APOB. The most common type of cardiovascular disease is atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. People probably have heard of that term here and there in, in, in very simple terms. What that means is it's the type of cardiovascular disease where plaque is building up in an artery and it can lead to obstruction of blood to the heart. You can have a heart attack or obstruction of blood flow to the brain and you can have a stroke. And this is the number one killer. This is Of the, all things to be focused on and concerned about, this is paramount. This is absolutely paramount. And you know, over the last 50 or 70 years, the science community has been able to identify what is the primary cause of this. There are particular um, lipoproteins in our blood, which is just a fancy way of saying a protein that carries fats, you know, because fats are not water soluble, so they can't freely flow through the blood like glucose can. They need to be carried by something. So that we package these fats and cholesterol up onto a protein and that allows them to move through circulation, primarily so we can take those fats to tissues and they can use them to produce energy. Some of these lipoproteins are considered atherogenic. That means that they can penetrate the artery wall and become stuck and their contents, the cholesterol and the fat, this builds up and you get the, the building up of the plaque, as I mentioned, which can become a problem over decades. It's not something that results in a heart attack in a matter of years. It's about lifetime exposure, very similar to smoking cigarettes. Now, LDL cholesterol has been the biomarker for a long time that's been really measured as a, a kind of surrogate way of looking at what concentration of these atherogenic lipoproteins do we have circulating in our blood. But LDL or low density lipoprotein is not, is not the only atherogenic lipoprotein, there's a family of them. So there's LDL, there's IDL and VLDL. In short, when you measure APOB, because each one of those lipoproteins has one APOB, you get the summation, the total of all atherogenic lipoproteins in the blood. Oh, that's interesting. So APOB is basically the common denominator amongst all lipoproteins. All atherogenic lipoproteins. So HDL, for example, does not have an APOB. It has a different protein attached to it. The beautiful thing about APOB is that all of the lipoproteins that we know that can penetrate and build up into the artery wall have one APOB. So if we measure APOB, we can get a very clear understanding as to the total burden of these atherogenic lipoproteins in our circulation. So this makes testing for APOB the number one indicator of cardiovascular health or lack thereof. What's interesting is that this is still relatively new. Uh, it's interesting that, that why did it take so long to figure this out? LDL has always been kind of the gold standard marker in terms of cardiovascular health. And to this day, a lot of general practitioner doctors, if you ask them to do an APOB test, it's, there's some confusion, right? It's still not as, main, there's not a, there still isn't an adequate enough mainstream awareness around this marker as being as important as it actually is. Is that correct? I asked Dr. Thomas Dayspring this question hmm. and if you look at the peer-reviewed literature, it's clear that APOB is a better predictor of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. 
particularly in 20 or 30% of, of the cases when people measure. His response was that you know, LDL cholesterol is what's been measured for a long time now. It's very hard to uh, imagine the amount of education that's required to get all of the doctors to understand that LDL cholesterol is Can't the outdated. AMA just send an email out to every single doctor <laughs> and then get, alert? And then get all of the labs to update the testing that they offer. And so the system takes a little bit longer to change. But you know, most of the prominent voices in lipidology and preventative cardiology are of the opinion that it will shift to ApoB. It's just a matter of time. And um, for the time being, it can be something that you can request from your physician. But as you say, you might be met with some resistance. Um, and then companies like Inside Tracker have made it easier. They've, mm -hmm. I think they added it, added it in the last six months or so. Yeah, and, and that gets to my own blood work. The last time that I had it done, which was February of 2022, was just before they offered that. So I regrettably have never had my ApoB tested. So in the context of this challenge, I just wanna point out like, I'm gonna be doing this. Mm -hmm. I need to do this. I've had a relatively sedentary year compared to prior years because of my lower back dilemma, but I'm on a good path with that now. And I'm back to a regimented fitness routine and I'm really looking to um, get structured and very intentional about what I'm doing in 2024. So I'm excited about this too. And I'm gonna be getting all my blood work yeah. done as well. And not to go to far on a tangent here. I know I promised you. Yeah, we had a whole con, we had a confab <laughs> before the podcast, no tangents. An intervention. <laughs> that was the this intervention that I needed. The, inter the intervention <laughs> that you need the most is to stay on track, my friend, but okay. go ahead. Well, I will indulge you this one time. I'm not, I promise I'm not trying to, you know, show off or, or show how smart I am or anything. In fact, everything that I'm presenting and, and in the challenge is, is information mostly from my guests and, and I'm, I'm just um, synthesizing that information, but it'd be irresponsible for me not to mention this. So within our, our calculator, one of the things that we consider is someone's baseline level of cardiovascular disease risk. And why is that important? Well, we're attributing you know, zero points to someone's ApoB if it's what we call suboptimal we're attributing half a point if it's normal, and we attribute one point if it is optimal. But what's optimal for ApoB depends on your risk of cardiovascular disease. So we ask that question. And within that question, we ask people, do you have a history of smoking? Do you have hypertension? Do you have a history of, of some type of cardiovascular event? But one of the important things that we ask for is do you have an LP little a level over 30 milligrams per deciliter? And I'm, I'm not sure that this is something a lot of people are aware of. It's something that's been spoken, you know, really only over the last couple of years. And there's been some quite damning research that's come out to show that this LP little a, which is pretty much 100% driven by genetics. So it's not something that's, that's driven by lifestyle. It's not something we can intervene on with lifestyle, which is why it's not one of the 10 truths. Every one of the 10 truths we can improve with lifestyle. But this LP little a is a subclass of LDL, primarily driven by genetics that is particularly atherogenic. About one in six people have a, an allele or a, a sort of gene mutation that places them at one, one and a half times the risk of having a cardiovascular event in their lifetime. Everyone should go out and measure LP little a as a once off test. There's nothing that you can really do to modulate LP little a right now. As I said, lifestyle doesn't seem to change it. There are uh, pharmaceutical companies looking at drugs that maybe in the future could lower it if you had elevated levels. But what it tells you, if that's elevated, 
then you want to be more aggressive at getting ApoB down. Your goal for ApoB is actually lower. Hmm. Interesting. So this speaks to the person who has a genetic non-lifestyle predisposition to a higher risk of a cardiovascular event in their life. A genetic predisposition, meaning that there is no intervention or non-pharmaceutical intervention that is going to ameliorate that. Not yet. And that in turn drives the importance we place upon what your ApoB is. If your ApoB is suboptimal and you have that LP little l allele or genetic predisposition, then that makes uh, your risk even more heightened. Contrarily or conversely, if somebody doesn't have that genetic predisposition and their ApoB is slightly suboptimal, this is of lower concern than if you're that person who has tested positive for LP little l. Is that a correct rehash of what you just shared? Yeah, I think that's that's correct. And and the way that I would look at this is that if you're considered high risk of cardiovascular disease, then your optimal and optimal ApoB is under 50 milligrams per deciliter. So that's if you have a history of cardiovascular disease, you have hypertension, you have smoking, or you have type two diabetes, any of those, or you have this LPA gene mutation, which causes LP little a to be really high, then your target for ApoB is lower. You want it to be under 50 milligrams per deciliter. So if you're high risk of cardiovascular disease, the target for ApoB is under 50 milligrams per deciliter. If you're considered low risk, then the target is under 80 milligrams per deciliter. Essentially what, what, what we're saying is, if you have all of these other risk factors that are going against you, then you don't wanna just stack ApoB on top of them. You wanna be more aggressive at getting that down. Interesting, and your calculator in the context of this challenge takes that into consideration through questions that you ask the person when they sign up. So that gets factored into the longevity score that gets associated mm -hmm. with this one truth, which is how meaningful is your ApoB result? Exactly, and the, the calculator is considering, you know, for many of these 10 truths, is considering you know, questions like that. It's also considering your sex and your age, these other factors that for some of these 10 truths, you know, what is suboptimal, what is normal, and what is optimal is different depending on your age and your gender. So we've considered you know, all of that when we've been kind of putting it together.